Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a quick look at the Sculpt Morph tool for the Headshot plugin in Character Creator 3. Now the Sculpt Morph tool is essentially used to modify, refine, and adjust uh, facial features on your character to conform more closely to your original image, but you can also use them to exaggerate facial features and uh, have fun with that in a more detailed fashion than you originally could with the general Character Creator 3 morphs. Okay, so on the screen we just have our default character here, and if we mouse our if we move our mouse over top of our character, you can see that there will be uh, yellow selection areas that will appear depending on where I move my mouse. Now these yellow selection areas are using the general uh, character creator three morphs, and if you don't want these yellow selection areas to appear, you can toggle your morph gizmo off. Okay, and then when you mouse over your character's head, nothing will happen. You can click on it, and it'll just create a selection box like this. Okay, uh, if you have it on and you click on any one of these areas, like for example the cheeks, you can click and drag and see the cheekbones uh, size will uh, appear larger, or you can make that smaller, um, however you want, okay? You can take the uh, the eyebrows up and uh, so on and so forth. And you can see those respective sliders um, move on the right hand side, okay? If you want to reset those sliders, you can just double click on the uh, the text of that slider parameter and it'll go back to the default value. Okay, you can also change the entire size of the skull by clicking and dragging on the very top um, of the skull there. We can take that uh, larger or smaller back to its original size and uh, so on and so forth. Okay, ears and everything as well. If we turn that uh, morph gizmo off, again, we, know we won't have any uh, highlights on our character's face. But let's go over to our headshot plugin and click on activate sculpt morph. Okay, so this is for shape adjustment for your character's head. Uh, once you uh, click on that, a few things will happen. First of all, you'll have this Sculpt Morph icon appear in the top right of your viewport, and that will indicate that you are in Sculpt Morph mode, okay? And uh, in addition, you'll have these uh, white, uh, kind of semi-transparent control areas appear over top of your character's face. Now, you can activate or deactivate those uh, by choosing to show or hide control areas. If you hide the control area, the mouse over will still uh, allow those to appear, However, you won't see the uh, semi-transparent white area. Now, uh, with the uh, Sculpt Morph mode, your adjustments for your character's facial features are a lot more detailed. There's over a thousand sliders in the Sculpt Morph uh, pack that you can utilize to basically refine any little detail of your character's face. Now, to differentiate further between the Sculpt Morph uh, sliders and the regular Morph sliders, you can go into your uh, Morph tab up here. Uh, morphs tab and we'll just twirl down the body and the head and stuff for now and you'll see that there under actor there are three main folders there's body head and headshot now under head these are the general sliders that you'll find for your character the ones that we adjusted at the very beginning all right um, if you deactivate sculpt morph mode you're going to be utilizing these ones okay these are the regular uh, heads head uh, morph parameters if we twirl that up and we activate uh, sculpt morph mode we're going to be adjusting these ones here in the headshot folder. So if I ha if I have my sculpt morph mode selected and I move something like the head, for example, it's going to go into that separate folder um, under headshot. Okay. If I adjust like the uh, the ears, for example, it's going to go into the ear folder again under the headshot main folder. And keep in mind that sculpt morph mode is only available for character creator three characters as well. Any previous generation characters, you will not be able to use the headshot morphs. All right. So just keep that in mind as well. So we also have the option to select or deselect symmetrical, okay? So if I, you know, have my, uh, you know, this area selected and I click and drag it, this is going to be my, the upper width of my face. You can see it's very similar to the cheeks that we had before, except it's the entire uh, face there. You can also do something like the cheeks, for example. We can blow out the cheeks and see the jaw width increase or decrease, all right? If I take symmetrical off, it's only going to adjust one side, okay? So I can adjust this side separately from the other side. Also keep in mind that whenever we make an adjustment using the headshot uh, um, morph parameters, the uh, the parameter is going to appear down here at the bottom, right, in the bottom left. Whichever one we're adjusting, for example, the ears, it'll pop to ear, scale right, scale left, okay, and that those parameters will appear down here as well as uh, jumping to the folder here in your morphs tab. Okay, so I showed about, I talked about symmetrical and show control areas. You can also select zoom to focus area. We'll talk about that when we get a little bit further in to the more detailed uh, categories here. So the first category we played around with right now is just the contour section. And you can use the shift Z, shift X, and C, and so on and so forth, V, 
B and N keys. Those are on your uh, bottom of your keyboard there to easily toggle between each one of these. I should also mention to easily toggle between the uh, main morph mode and the uh, sculpt morph mode, you can use the shift S hotkey. So if I turn shift, if I press shift S, it's going to go back to my regular uh, morph mode here. If I press shift S again, it's going to activate sculpt morph mode here using the headshot plugin. Okay. So shift S, shift S, and we can toggle that on and off. In addition, you can also adjust parameters beyond the limit. So for example, if we test, if we take this, uh, you know, uh, chin, for example, let's take the chin and uh, move it down. You can see we, we get uh, that result right there. The ears, we click on the ears like this. We can move the ears uh, separately. I'm going to turn symmetrical on right now since we don't want to totally misproportion our character's face. Um, let's take a look at the uh, the nose, for example. So you can see here we're adjusting the face height. So this is the regular contour and the face height slider is um, increasing or decreasing as I click and drag right here. Now, if, if we wanted to, you know, really decrease the face height, we can take it down to negative 100, increase it to a maximum of 100. If we wanted to take that further, I'll just move this over a little bit here. We can change, we can actually enter in a number here. We can enter in a number of like 150 and that'll make it even longer. We can enter in, in the number of like, uh, if we want to have a really giant head, something like 250. Okay. And you can see the results right there. You can make your characters look a bit more comical. And I'm going to turn off my morph uh, gizmo there. And if you want to restore it back to its original value, again, you can just double click the parameter itself and it'll restore it back to the default value. Very important little tip there. Anything you can, uh, you can just double click and it'll restore it back to the uh, original value that it was. Okay. Um, you can also go into side facing mode as well. Okay. So move your character to the side, uh, move your camera to the side, take a look at your character from the side. And these modes can actually be, you know, right now we're looking at depth. Okay. So generally when you're uh, making adjustments to these more parameters from the side, you'll see the word depth. Okay. So you're mostly adjusting the depth, like the uh, face lower depth right here. Okay. We can move that in or out. This will be like a uh, face upper depth. Okay. Like this and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So when you move from, uh, from the side facing view, uh, you're mostly adjusting things like the depth. Okay, now let's take a look at the different uh, levels uh, of your shape adjustment. Um, right now we're on the contour level, like I mentioned. Uh, we can move over to the face level, and this is going to be a lot more detailed. For this, let's just go ahead and show control areas. And you can see the face uh, level is a lot more detailed than contour. So contour is for main facial shape, and our head shape rather, and face is for the kind of smaller facial details like this. We can bring the upper um, eyebrow up, up or down. We can uh, flare out the nose like this. Uh, again, small little details like this. Um, you can take the uh, eye height, move that up or out. We can uh, also move it some, from uh, side to side as well. It all depends on which direction you uh, drag when you click. Uh, you can adjust these in various ways. Okay, the lip angle is a, very, is a really useful one. Okay, you can change your character's lip angles and uh, have lots of fun with that. Um, the next up is the eyes. So if we have zoom to focus area selected, we can go, you know, like somewhere over here, for example, and we can just go ahead and click on the eye section there and it'll zoom right to the eyes, go to the nose, the mouth and so on. OK, but let's take a quick look at a couple of you know details of the eyes here. We can, you know, adjust the, uh, the eyebrows, um, the uh, angle like I showed you earlier. Um, there's things like the in inside of the eyelid, uh, the length of it. Um, these ones here are for, uh, you know, different um, heights of the eyelid. You can adjust these as well. Um, these ones right here kind of for eyelashes, right? So you can see the eyelashes uh, move up or down like that. Um, all sorts of, you know, fun details that you can uh, figure out on your own time. There's thousands of sliders to go through, so I'm not going to go through uh, all of them in this uh, in this tutorial. Let's move on to the nose, though, just to show you some of the more, uh, you know, useful nose ones. Uh, flaring a nostril is obviously very useful. These ones here are for the kind of nostril height and nostril uh, angle as well, okay? Uh, this one right here is for the, uh, the, the septum, the separator of the nose uh, height. So a lot of detail here. You can just kind of expand your nose, uh, make it thinner. And also, you know, the side is very useful for the nose as well. So if we wanted to give her more of a ski jump nose, we can do so. Turn the nose up like that. Turn it down. Okay, that's the nose tip height. And you can see the nose tip depth as well down there is being adjusted. So this is the nose ridge depth and everything. So keep in mind that, you know, every every facial feature um, has the um, regular parameters, but also the depth if you look at it from the side view. Okay, let's move over to the uh, mouth now. So mouth is a very important uh, part of your character as well. Uh, you can see here, we can adjust the various features. Um, 
the lips are very important for the mouth. You can increase or um, decrease the height of different parts of your lips, like I kind of showed you earlier. Increase or decrease the lip size. And, uh, you know, lots of different parameters you can mess around with on your own time. And then we'll zoom over to the ears. And again, ears you can uh, make small adjustments to as well. Um, different uh, angles and, uh, you know, have fun with that um, on your own time. I just really wanted to show you the different um, areas that you can adjust more specifically. So let's take a quick look at a sample workflow by going into auto mode. I'm going to generate a character in auto mode here. I'm just going to double click on my uh, image here and load up a very simple image. We're going to change him to a male body type. And in this case, we're not going to use any masks since we want to keep more of his original uh, beard texture there as well as his uh, hair because auto mode is going to generate some hair for us. Okay, so when we're ready, we'll just go ahead and click generate and that head will pop up in just a minute. Okay, so this is the head that uh, our headshot plugin has generated automatically. It looks fairly decent. However, you can notice that there's one glaring issue right off the bat here, and that's that the eyeballs are kind of a little bit too far outside of the eyelids. As you can see right here, if we look at it closely from the side, the eyeballs are actually outside of the eyelids. So that's a big no-no, and we want to be able to adjust that. So I'll press the J hotkey to go to my uh, front view here, and let's go directly to the uh, eye section here. Now with this close-up view, I'm going to go into the headshot parameters here. Uh, under here and we're going to go to I. Okay, and you can click on a main folder You can click in like general or opening or anything like that But if you click in a main folder and you search uh, something like depth for example You can see there's a, a slider for eye depth. Okay, we can increase or uh, Decrease the eye depth like this, but that's not really helping us get, get rid of that uh, eye issue there So I'm just going to double click and restore this back to the original I'm going to go rather into the eyeball section and you can see now we have eyeball depth and I'm going to click and drag and move that a little bit further in. Okay, so you can see that adjusting correctly. Negative 32 should be just fine. And now it looks a little bit more like the actual image of the character's face. The eyes are a bit smaller and they're not popping out of the head at least. Okay, so that's something that we obviously want to avoid. Um, maybe take that a little bit further in as well. There we go. Okay, so that's one easy adjustment to make with the, uh, with the eyes. And, you know, maybe this character has a little bit of a longer head. So, again, we can increase the head uh, size, uh, depth like this, the chin size, the entire uh, head like this. Just kind of stretch it out a little bit more. Okay, his head isn't as, as rounded as it appears on the model there. And we can adjust, you know, things like if we go to the uh, face. Let's go ahead and show control areas here for the face. We could probably bring those uh, temples in a little bit or maybe expand them out, um, depending on the look we want to go for. I think this guy is a fairly decent representation. Maybe his cheeks are a little bit uh, closer in like that. But we want to get the overall uh, head shape a little bit closer to the original. And I've kind of gone through most of these tools already. Maybe the ears can be uh, can be brought in a little bit as well, just like this, to uh, conform a little bit more to our character, and, and the cheeks can be taken out a little bit. Another very important one to look at is the facial planar perspective in in the headshot uh, in the headshot parameters here. Okay, so if we go under headshot and we go to uh, face, let's just type in uh, plane, okay? Uh, face planar perspective. This is an important one to adjust, to be able to adjust. You can see we can bring the character's face out like this or have it appear more like flat like this. Now this is, you know, fairly important. And if we, if we take a side view look at this, um, you'll see a, a different perspective as well like over here. I'll just go ahead and uh, you can see the results that it creates like that. The, fa the facial features will become closer together or further apart. This is a very important one to, uh, to look at um, when you're adjusting your character's uh, uh, face. But again, as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of sliders um, under, the, under the headshot uh, plugin um, for head, for skull, for face, um, forehead, eyes, um, ears, all sorts of different sliders that you can uh, take a look at. Um, if we close our or delete our search there, you can see them a bit more. There's just you know tons and tons and tons, even just the lips. Um, you know, have dozens of sliders here or even the lip seam. Um, there's various uh, sliders that you can adjust. And uh, like I mentioned, we don't have time to go through that on this uh, tutorial, unfortunately, but uh, we will have future tutorials that go into more detail on, on sculpting to make your character ideally look exactly like the source image that you're using with the Headshot plugin. All right, so thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. And uh, make sure you check out our forums, as always, at forum.reillusion.com and our learning center for our headshot plugin for more tutorials. And I hope to see you in the next video.